The ylang ylang plant comes from Indonesia and was imported here. The colonizers introduced it to the island just like they did with vanilla. This is the Bambao company. This is where they distilled the ylang ylang, cloves, vanilla, nutmeg, and lemongrass. It was a big company here in the Comoros. A lot of people worked here. It was a little like a state within a state. It employed the majority of the Comoros population, especially here in Anjouan. Everyone worked for Bambao. The Comoros Bambao Company was created in 1907 and reigned supreme over this huge tropical garden and those who tended to it. My father was lucky enough to work for the Bambao Company. He started as a simple agent, but by the end, he had a lot of responsibilities. His work at the Bambao Company kept us, his family. Because my father was an employee, we had access to education and we were schooled. I was able to go to a private school thanks to the salary my father earned at Bambao. When the Comoros became independent in 1975, the big estates were broken up and the colonizers left the islands. With that came the collapse of a production system that had been entirely dominated by French interests. Today, the population is mainly rural and most people make a living from the land. Now the local populations have taken back the colonial land. They cut down the ylang ylang trees in order to survive, as one cannot live off ylang ylang. You need other crops. So the ylang ylang trees were replaced with bananas, manioc, coconut palms and breadfruit. Today the landscape is totally different than what it was during the colonial era. Over the past 40 years, the Comorians have been gradually moving away from cultivation exclusively for the international market. Quantities have fallen, quality is irregular, and the local people are struggling to feed their families. Here, almost half of the population lives on less than two euros per day. However, Ilang Ilang is still one of the country's main exports. And boosting production again, could really help get the Comoros economy back on its feet. The big perfume companies would also benefit from this renaissance. That's what perfume creator for Guerlain, Thierry Wasser, believes. He is being welcomed by Ali Issouf in the Comoros for the second time this year. He is one of the rare noses to regularly visit the country to better understand its raw materials and those who produce them. Paradoxically, one might say this typically French industry, one of expertise and luxury, often sources its materials in some extremely poor countries such as the Comoros. I believe there is a lot of unemployment here. Many young people are unemployed and many lose their lives at sea trying to reach Mayotte, for instance. It's a terrible situation. So I've come to say that you have an agriculture here that has the potential to become something extraordinary for the population in general. And it's also our responsibility to work with the Comoros in the production of ylang ylang and other things. Until now, Comoros ylang ylang was exclusively about serving the needs of the perfume industry. Today, production is becoming more focused on serving the needs of the local people. For Marie Aziari, head of the Filière Durable Ylang program for sustainable Ylang Ylang production, that is the only way to effectively modernize an industry under threat. The luxury industry has products they want to continue producing for years to come. And they are very well aware of the fragility and vulnerability of the raw materials required. 
So their approach now is no longer about the rich exploiting the poor. That's not where we're at anymore, due to mutual interests. You cannot allow yourself to abandon an industry because it's no longer economically viable. You need a medium and long-term vision for supply, and you need to take medium and long-term initiatives. For most young Comorians, Ilang Ilang is something from the past. It will take time to convince them that this flower can offer them a future. There are many challenges and the wounds run deep. From the flower to the vial, every step of the production process needs to be reinvented. On the island of Grand Comore, the biggest of the three islands in the Union, the Filière Durable Ilang program is already seeing some impressive results. Marie Aziari and her local teams are currently breathing new life into one of the oldest and biggest establishments on the islands, the Umblo Distillery. 28-year-old Omar Hassan is the estate manager. Together, Marie and Omar have decided to start from the ground up and have set up an ambitious program for training the growers. On Grand Comore, half of the Ylang Ylang trees date back to colonial times. Many are dying, others are returning to the wild. But when you look here at the Humblo plantation, there are many trees that are old, but which continue to produce good flowers. That is because we are constantly maintaining them. We maintain them and improve them. Without human intervention, Kananga odorata, the flower tree, can grow to a height of 30 meters. The top needs to be regularly chopped off to encourage a solid base. Omar Hassan is explaining this process of de-heading to his teams. Deheading involves removing the branches that grow upwards and encouraging the tree to grow downwards. This makes life easier for the harvesters who don't have to climb up high. It also encourages better flowering, because if the tree doesn't flower at the top, it saves energy and all its fresh sap is sent downwards, resulting in a lot of flowers. So deheading is very important. The Ilang Ilang tree flourishes on dry and rocky volcanic soil, but it requires some careful attention to ensure abundant flowering. At the end of the rainy season, the trees must be quickly pruned of their branches with the most leaves and clear the paths of weeds to help keep down parasite populations. In the Omblo plantation, around 20 permanent employees rotate around the many plots on the plantation. All of them, whether veterans of the old days or newcomers, have received training that is often lacking in other parts of the archipelago. Thanks to their hard work, these orchards of trees, sometimes more than 50 years old, are enjoying a renaissance. <laughs> 